Okay, so this is the perforated, reusable, sterilizable, edentulous tray. Not a dentate tray, it's an edentulous tray. This one I'm putting in is a little bit smaller. What I want to provide is about a half a mil, uh, excuse me, about a quarter of an inch or about five millimeters, half a centimeter extra space between the patient's maxillary jaw and the tray. Now putting water in first, this can be deionized, distilled water, but based on the manufacturer's recommendations, that green spatula I just showed you, it's flat on one end, it'll be bad. This one I'm opening up right now has a rounded edge um, on both sides, which makes it easier to triturate. You can see it's sterilized, okay? In the, uh, in the bowl behind us, what I have here, three scoops of powder set aside previously so I could put the water in first, and then I'll be able to drop that powder in and begin to manipulate, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, the, um, I'm gonna use alginate here, not alginate substitute. Alginate substitute is used, but alginate is more widely used. Alginate impressions used at this time are most commonly irreversible hydrocolloids, which change when mixed with water to form a wet, Play-Doh-like material called a salt to a solid, rubbery material called a gel. As for the one sentence science, the sol will flow to capture the edentulous ridges, anatomy, and then after about two to five minutes from hand mixing in the water, the alginate's high molecular weight copolymer of anhydro beta, uh, beta delta manuronic acid, basically the stretch uh, copolymer, and anhydro beta delta guluronic acid, the stability copolymer, will fuse with calcium salts to make the rubbery gel impression, okay? So now, here's what we're gonna do. In small amounts, we're going to fill the tray with firm pressure to displace and ensure a good lock-in. We'll wipe the alginate in some cases into the palate, in edentulous cases, dentate cases, you'd wipe a little bit onto the occlusal surface of the teeth. I'm just going to add a little bit extra to the uh, peripheral area. Okay. Then I'm going to take it to the patient's mouth. Patients will usually tense up. Look how tight those muscles are. You'll never get the material in there, barely get the air out. So I've lifted up to let all the air out and I'm wiping on either side. I'm wiping on the premaxilla. Now I'm smearing it, okay? So I have the best chance of wetting the entire surface. Open wide, that displaces the coronoid process forward. Close into the middle of Pasalt's diagram, giving us more range of motion. Forward and back, that's gonna move more of the coronoid process, tonsillar pillars around. Now we're shaping the buccal, uh, buccal frenums, vestibules, labial frenum, vestibules, the fornix area, all of that is now being captured arbitrarily within one minute while this is setting. Okay, so that's the clinical technique. This material can be uh, manipulated with different temperatures to accelerate the rate of reaction. I don't recommend the use of minimal amounts of water. I would rather people just find a viscous, hydro, uh, uh, viscous irreversible, irreversible hydrocolloid like this one here by Zermok. This is Hydrogum 5. Gel trait is a little bit less viscous. Here's the final impression. You can see there is a PPS. Don't be distracted by that. What I want to show you is a good peripheral seal all the way around. Okay, we've got a good solid impression. There is a little bit of a notch on the back. Keep in mind this is for a custom tray. And the custom tray is going to be cut back by about four to five millimeters. That bubble on the left is not going to affect that because it's going to be cut away. But you can see a good solid seal everywhere. The PPS was designed there. We're going to do it again in the second impression, but done designed here to tell the laboratory how far to bring back the impression. That's everything on the technique and the materials used.